forth the proposition that it is better to be the person behind the person in front. <laughs> I am going to perhaps reinforce that notion <laughs> and prove Thomas's assertion that um, William of Normandy did indeed do the right thing. So as I researched the Battle of Hastings, a large, amorphous body of history, but I kept coming back to Godwin and his sons. I'm not, his oldest was called either Swine or Sven. I'm going to go with Swine. <laughs> And then, of course, Harold Godwinson, you know, the supposed king. And then the youngest, Tostig. <laughs> but let's start with Godwin himself. In 1015, he was a really good buddy of Canute of Denmark. And Canute took over the English throne. Godwin, being a buddy, Within two years, by the age of 17, he was the Earl of Wessex. A few years later, he accompanied Newt back to Denmark on just a visit, where he cemented further relations by marrying the sister of Newt's brother-in-law. Now, as I'm digging through all these things, I was think I actually was thinking of doing a song, but this tune got stuck in my head, and I was pretty sure Orla would shoot me if I did this. <laughs> but I'm gonna do a little bit of it anyway. <laughs> Godwin, Godwin and sons. <laughs> they took women to get their keeps. Godwin, Godwin and sons. Boy, these guys are really some creeps. <laughs> That's going to be the theme of what I'm going to tell you for the rest. Okay, so Newt didn't last too long on the throne. And in 1035, it was up for grabs again. It was reportedly claimed by three different people, all related in some way or another to um, Ethelred the Unready. One was Alfred Atheling, a half-brother, Hartha Knut and his half-brother, Harold Harefoot. As a side note, I've become convinced that in this whole saga, there's really only 10 male names. <laughs> <laughs> so, Godwin, being the enterprising person that he is, he pretended to be friends with Alfred Ethelene. Ethelene, however that's pronounced. Ethelene. <laughs> and enticed him to come visit him where he promptly captured him and turned him over to Harold Harefoot. Nobody knows for sure, but all of a sudden, Alfred is blind and he dies. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, happens, yeah, you know, so. But, so Harold Harefoot got the throne. That didn't last too long, five years later. He's uh, gone, and Godwin goes, hmm looking for that next person to be in front of him. He's starting to see himself as a kingmaker now. He picks the, the half-brother left, Hartha Knut. Hartha Knut. I just love to say that. Um, but Hartha Knut lasted even less time. He died in 1042, two years later. So then the last surviving son of Ethelred is Edward the Confessor who's been living in Normandy for the last 25, 30 years. But, Godwin supports him and he comes over. And just to make sure that he secures, you know, his relationship, he has his daughter Edith marry Edward. So, that's Dad. Let's go on to the oldest son, Swine. <laughs> He had also benefited from Dad's, you know, connections, and he was an Earl by 1043. Um, however, he got
got exiled in 1047 because he kidnapped an abbess because he wanted her lands. There's a theme here, folks. <laughs> Um, by 1049, somehow he was in command of a fleet of ships to aid the German emperor against Baldwin, Count of Flanders, who was in revolt against Henry. But during this campaign, Swine went back to England and tried to get a pardon from the king. But his brother Harold and a cousin Bjorn refused to return the lands that they had gotten when he was exiled, his lands. So he uh, did not get pardoned. Later, after leaving the royal court, Swine kidnapped Bjorn and killed him. So in 1045, Harold, the second son, became, oh gosh, let's see, an earl. <laughs> what? Go figure. And it was around this time that he began a relationship with Edith, who was a prominent landowner in his new earldom. They didn't really get married by the church, but it was a form of marriage apparently known as Mor Danico, or in the Danish manner. <laughs> and apparently the children of such a union were considered legitimate. And gosh, he likely entered this relationship to yeah. her lands. <laughs> yep, that was it. Okay, let's go back. So, Edward the Confessor, the holy, the really Norman raised kid, he's king. Godwin starts to go, huh, there's a lot of Norman influence. And he starts to become the leader of a growing opposition to Norman influence. One of the examples is he was ordered by the king to punish some of his people because they refused to pay taxes and stuff. Um, and instead he refused. So for this dastardly deed, no, I will not kill my people, Godwin and all his sons were exiled from England in 1051. This didn't last a whole long time. 1052, less than a year later, they're back, having gained the support of the Navy, the burghers, and the peasants, compelling Edward to restore them. And this was the point in time where the historians say, the difference in Edward's level of activity from the earlier part of the reign implies a withdrawal from affairs. <laughs> yes. So that was 52. In 1053, Godwin dies. Dad is dead. Oh. Well, no, there is a rumor that he choked on a piece of bread while just denying any disloyalty to the king. <laughs> so, the Normans had claimed that Edward had promised the throne to William, which really, in many ways, seems reasonable. He was raised in Normandy, so he had all these Norman leanings, and of course, he had gotten Harold to promise that, yes, William would be the next king. What happened to Swine, you might ask? Oh, sorry. Swine actually got a heart, repented, went on journey to Jerusalem, and mysteriously died. <laughs> okay. Let's see if I can make this quicker. So when Godwin died, Harold became the focus of the growing opposition to the Normans. We forgot the younger son, Pastig. He became the Earl of the Earl of York. But in 1065, the year before the big things, um, he tried to double their taxes. His people didn't like that. The Thanes of York and all the, you know, the rest of them, they descended on the city, killed his officials and supporters, and then declared him outlawed. Well, of course he appealed to the king. 
Harold convinced Edward, because Harold was a far looking guy, going, huh, Pastic is going to split this kingdom in two. I don't want that to happen. No, Your Majesty, you shouldn't pardon Tostig. This really bothered him. That's my brother. What do you mean you shouldn't pardon me? <coughs> I'll get you, Harold, says Tostig. So Tostig is exiled again. Okay. But not after accusing Harold of trying to foment the rebellion in the first place. Okay, so Edward dies. The Wittengamot, which I might have... Oh, did I say that right? Thank you. Um, I'm sure not influenced by anybody, but they declare Harold Godwinson King. <coughs> Toxic, who meanwhile has sailed away, has taken ref refuge with Count Baldwin V. Remember the one swine was, was uh, fighting against? Baldwin gave him a fleet. He went back to the Isle of Wight. He collected money to be raided. And yet two earls, Edwin and Morcar, beat him up and sent him back out of the country. Where he fled to Scotland. Malcolm, King Malcolm, that some people might rule. So he spent the summer there. But from there he made contact with Harold Hardrada. Hardrada stands for hard rule. So Tostig is really not loyal at all to England. In fact, the whole Godwins and their sons who are not really loyal to England. They're looking out for themselves. Tostig gets an army from Malcolm, goes back. In the early September of 1066, Harold rides up from London to fight Tostig, because gosh, we can't have this going on. Kills Tostig, his own brother, and all his adherents. Meanwhile, Harold has gone, huh, yeah, there's all this infighting going on. I'm going to take England. i got to go. <laughs> anyway, he, the Godwins and their sons got their well-deserved endings. Oh,